Hi, how are you? How are you going? How's your week been? How are your kids? This week I've heard the whole contrast again. So from, oh, we're doing great, we're having a wonderful time, we're just enjoying being together and the kids are playing happily and they're rekindling their sibling friendship that maybe they'd lost a bit when other kids were around and oh, it's so wonderful and beautiful, to the opposite. So I had a parent this week tell me that although they were coping really well with work, their children was the thing that was really concerning them. So they have three kids aged eight, six and four. And this parent told me that somehow at school they had gotten into their heads that all the adults in the world were going to die. So this parent was telling me that they'd, they'd also gone to the chemist and there'd been security guards at the chemist and they'd had to um, test their temperature before they were allowed in. And this um, caused the kids to freak out even more. It's cockatoo time. <laughs> Um, so this parent was saying that before this, before this week, the kids have been fine. But once this all started to come out, the parents are now realising that um, to what extent the kids have picked these things up on and realising that it's a huge problem. And now they were saying it seems like the kids' anxiety is getting worse, not better. So this has caused me to talk about this this week. I didn't intend to talk about this this week, but I think it's really important because this is exactly what we want to stop from happening or fix it quickly if it has happened or it does happen. And it could be that your kids have picked something up um, that scared them at school or maybe from the media or maybe from overhearing things, other people talking, and they haven't said anything. So I'm going to encourage you this week to keep an ear to the ground. Now that they're home and kind of in some kind of routine and they're hopefully feeling safe and surrounded by loved ones, if they have picked things up, this could be the time that things start to seep out. So, if your kids are starting to return to school as well, look out for it. Um, you know, I think actually I might have a chat about the return to school in a week or two when more of our kids are starting to go back because it's a big deal and I will get completely sidetracked here. So, let's stay with where we're at for now. Um, with kids still at home, imagining that kids are still at home. If your kids have gone back to school and you're having issues there, or you're seeing things pop up, feel free to contact me privately. So back to um, where we were. Our kids, particularly our little ones, or kids who were prone to anxiety, having in their head a terrible belief, like the one I heard this week, that all adults are going to die, is, I don't need to tell you this, it's a huge problem and it's tragic. Um, imagine for a minute that you have no logical mind, no rational part of your brain that could talk you out of thoughts. So you hear it and it's straight in there. There's no filter in your brain to help you decide whether it's true or not. Um, whether it's likely to be true or not, whether to allow it in or not, unchallenged. So it's not rationalised away, it's not countered with a different statement or other things that you know that might make that less likely to be true. It just passes straight on through, unfiltered, into your subconscious mind and there it sits below the level of your awareness. Um, well, that's exactly what happens with our kids. 
So the younger ones, six, seven-ish sometimes, and, lo and younger, there's no filter. They hang around predominantly in a brainwave state that doesn't allow for much rational thought. Particularly for the younger ones, their brainwave state is akin to, um, to one that people would put you on in to hypnotize you. So they're not connected to the parts of the brain which allow for critical thinking. They're like a sponge. Whatever they hear goes straight in to the subconscious. So if they're a child that has a propensity for anxious thinking patterns, they might keep things they hear alive in their conscious mind and go over and over and over them at that time. But even if your kids aren't like that, even if they don't spend any time thinking about it at that time and just get right on with playing or um, life or whatever they're doing in that moment and they're right into the next moment, it's still gone in there. So it's, it's sitting in the subconscious mind. So what's going to happen to it? Well, let's talk about two main scenarios. Um, number one, it may come out at some point, and that's exactly what's happened to the parents I was chatting with this week. Something triggered it, and it started to come out, to come up into conscious awareness and come out, which is great because now you can learn about exactly what they've heard, what they're thinking, how they're feeling about it, and most importantly, what beliefs they have so that you can start to tackle it. Scenario two, it may never come out directly. If things have, have, if things that they've heard have slipped right by the conscious mind and gone straight into the subconscious, whilst they were busy doing something else, and this is particularly what happens with the younger children, they may never be aware that it's in there. Or... It may come out later as an adult when it's triggered or when they start looking into their subconscious beliefs or, you know, who knows, it may come out, but it may not. So in the meantime, what will happen is it will serve as a filter through which information will be taken in for the rest of their lives, potentially. So it will affect the way that they see the world at some level all below the level of consciousness, so unaware to them and to you. Our brain, if you think about it, is designed to keep us safe, to be on alert to danger, things that could harm us. And so the thought for a child that all adults in the world are going to die is something for the brain to sit up and take notice of. So suffice for here to say that to live with that belief somewhere in there is going to have an effect on them long term if it's not dealt with. So please, this week, I urge you, check in with your kids again. Ask them how they are, what they think of this whole situation, how they're feeling. But most importantly, keep your ears to the ground. You know, keep an eye out when they're playing with their siblings or with dolls or toys or, you know, figurines or dreams that they have. Pay attention. We talked last week um, about you being the detective of yourself and looking um, investigating how you truly are and this week I encourage you be, to be the detective of your kids so have a look under the cover and see how they really are I will be here this evening 8 p.m. Sydney time so three and a half ish hours from now um, 11 a.m. UK time We've got one regular um, American participant who joins us at 6 a.m. Um, respect to you. Thank you for making the effort and, you know, 
having that level of um, buy-in for your own mental health and your kids, you know who you are. Um, whatever time it is for you, we are here for you and you, for your mental health and for your kids' mental health to help you get through this, to help you thrive because of this. So see you there, 8 p.m. tonight. Um, message me for the Zoom link if you need it and keep your questions coming too. For those of you who can't make the call, I'm, I know I'm getting some questions and I love getting them and it helps me to help you. It helps me to know where you're at. So keep them coming. Totally happy for them. Um, so stay safe. Stay, stay mentally well. You and your kids sending lots of love from here. Have a glorious week. <laughs>